Hi, my name is Sebastian Matteau and this is the third of a three-part video series about object-oriented programming in Python. Now, in the second video, the previous one, we saw how uh, we implemented this particular class called NumberList. And you see that NumberList is basically a, a class that has been created from scratch, right? The only functionality that this class has is the functionality that we explicitly built into it. Namely, it has a mean method and a length property. But there, now let's say, I think this is a list of numbers. It's supposed to be a list of numbers. So a reasonable expectation that you might have is that you, we can loop through it, right? So what we want to be able to do is say for number in a number list, no, not number list, sorry. That would be trying to iterate through the class. I want to iterate through the object and it's called FIBO. For a number in FIBO, print number. I would expect this to work, but if I run it up, I get an error and you see the error comes from this line, number 23, and it says number list object is not iterable. What does it mean? It means that our number list class and the objects that are instances of it do not have the functionality that allows Python through loop through it as you would expect a list to be able to do. So how can we fix that? How can we make this iterable? We can do it in two ways. Uh, we could explicitly implement the functionality that we need to make any kind of object iterable. And I have a video uh, about that that is at the end of the object-oriented playlist. Um, but that's a bit complicated. For now, what I want to uh, highlight is the concept of object inheritance. And that is the concept of taking, or class inheritance, the concept of taking one class, and we will take the normal built-in list class, and we make a new class, our number list class, that takes all the functionality that was already in the initial list class and adds and changes some things. That's what we want to do. So what we want, the first step is to tell Python that number list is not a class de novo, so to say, from scratch, but it actually inherits from list. How do we do that? By doing like this, up, list. So we tell Python number list is actually an instance of a list. Uh, not an instance of a list, sorry, a subclass of a list. So it takes everything that list was already able to do and we're going to add some stuff. Then we have our initialization function. It takes a list of numbers. Originally, we were assigning um, this list of numbers to the underscore data field, uh, but now we're going to do it differently. We're going to actually call the underscore init uh, uh, a function that is actually already part of list. You never really use it normally, but it exists. And we can uh, call it like this. We can say super. What does super mean? Well, it means the class that we're actually building upon, list in other words, dot underscore init. And what does that expect? Uh, it expects a list of things, numbers. So this will work, All right? So what we're doing here is basically uh, going from the our init function in number list and then calling the init function of the class that we're extending or inheriting or building upon. Uh, and it goes like this. There are a few other ways, actually also a video about the use of super, but this is the easiest way. Then we can also extend some functionality, right? The way we're doing it now, and actually the way we already did it, we could pass any kind of, any kind of object as a number, and then it would simply crash when we would try to, you know, it would simply violate basically uh, what our class is supposed to do, but we didn't check whether the numbers were actually numbers. How can we do that? Well, we can say, um, first, let me just give the for loop way. We can say for number in numbers. So we're going to loop through it. And then we say, if not is instance, we've seen this before, right? So now we're going to test whether our number is an instance of what? Well, it should be either an int or a float. This is okay for Python. The isInstance function takes as a first argument the object that we want to check, and as a second, second argument either a class or a tuple of multiple classes if we want to in, say that it should be either an int or a float. So if this is not the case, then what we do is say we raise a type error, and then we say expecting a number, expecting numbers. So this is a very nice and clean Pythonic way, right? We're checking the input to our function, and if not, we're raising the, the applicable appropriate exception, in this case, a type error, because indeed it's a violation of the type, right? We expect an int or a float, and we got something else, so we raise a type error. 
So what we're seeing here is we're extending basically the functionality that was already in the list. Um, we also now need to change other things in our, in our implementation, right? Because the mean function before the mean method, so function being a method being a function that's part of an object, used to refer to self dot underscore data, but it doesn't ex exist anymore. But self is now a regular list, right? The object is now a regular list because we're inheriting from list. So we, and this means cool, I think, um, that we can simply get the mean of self directly. And the same is true for our length property. We get the len of self directly because self will be a list. Um, of course, it's a bit redundant to have a length property to begin with, but if we want it, because we can already simply do len now, also for our number list, uh, but if we wanted to do it, then this would be the way. So you see, uh, this is very simple, right? And now we have all the power of our number list, all the power of a list, and we included it in our number list. And one of the things that the list is very magically able to do is support this kind of iteration. So let's run it. Yep. And now you see it works. It gets 2.4, length 5, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, right? So it does everything that we expect it to do. Um, let's also take a look at what happens if we actually violate the input. Yep. Say that we pass an A and an A is neither an int nor a float. So if we take this and we execute it, yep, we get indeed a type error expecting numbers. So our check here that we implemented ourselves while extending the list class uh, does what it's supposed to do. Okay, so here we've seen the basic idea of object inheritance or class inheritance. And we've made number list extend or inherit or built upon the original list class. You can do many more things. There's also the possibility of multiple inheritance such that number list would inherit from list and some kind of other object, say, you know, a dict or something crazy like that or a string perhaps. Um, um, but th th those things are kind of advanced and you will not do it so often in real life. So for the purpose of real life object oriented programming, just understanding the basics of class inheritance and the use of the super uh, function is already, uh, will already get you a long way. Okay, that concludes this three, uh, three part video series about the basics of object oriented programming in Python. I will add a few uh, of my videos related to object oriented programming in various ways to the end of this playlist. Uh, they, these will touch upon the more complicated topics such as the super function, uh, creating magic functions of objects, uh, multiple inheritance, etc. But this three-part video series hopefully already provided you with sort of sort of a firm, basic understanding of what object-oriented programming is in Python. All right, thank you very much for watching.